Hello and welcome to Film Companion South. In this episode, we are going to be talking about Metaga, a biopic of Velupale Prabhakaran. The character of the LTT chief is portrayed by Kutimani. The film is directed by Kittu and is available on Black Sheep Channel's OTT platform called BS Value. Now, how do you make a movie about a complex, controversial man like Velupale Prabhakaran? Now, one way is to make a mini series out of it so you leave nothing out and you have a picture of the whole person. Another way is to take a slice of his life like we had in the Motorcycle Diaries. Now that film showed us how a youngster took a road trip across South America and how his experiences, what he saw, transformed him eventually into the leader we now know as Che Guevara. Medagu, which means His Excellency, an eminent personality, follows a similar approach. It shows how the happenings in Sri Lanka of the time transformed a young lad into the LTT founder and chief Velupale Prabhakaran. Now, right from the very beginning, we have no doubts about where the film sympathies lies, the filmmaker sympathies lie. We are told that the Tamils are the original inhabitants of Sri Lanka. We are told that the Sinhala language is a mix of several languages, including Tamil. And this voiceover, it all happens in a short stretch at the beginning, also tells us how the Sinhalese began to embrace Buddhism and how the Tamils did not. And therefore, this created a lot of friction among the two communities. In fact, we are told that the Buddhist monks were kind of fascist over there because they resented the fact that the Tamils did not embrace their religion. And we are told that they were the cause for a lot of the events that eventually led to the long and bloody civil war. After this opening, we land in 1995 in Madurai. A Terukutu is about to take place. It has two characters, one representing the Tamils of Sri Lanka and one representing the Sinhalese. Now, this is an inspired idea from the director Kittu because every every now and then from the main story, we keep returning to the performance of the Skutu. So, it gives us a lot of visual relief. Secondly, the Terukutus are almost always about legends and mythical figures. And we are told right off the bat that what we are about to watch is about a mythical figure that is Prabhakar is going to be presented as a mythical figure. And third, the name of the troop, the name of the Terukutu troop is Adaikalam, which means refuge, protection. Think about that for a second. The rest of the film between these Kutu stretches is the story of Prabhakaran from birth and his transformation into the kind of man who commits an act of violence at the end of this movie. Now, the film stops there. That is the defining act that will make him the Prabhakaran that we know today. So, in a way, it is like the Motorcycle Diaries, except that Che Guevara was transformed by what he saw as he drove across South America. And here, uh, Prabhakaran is transformed by what he saw happening around him to Tamils in Sri Lanka. In fact, for the longest time, Prabhakaran is almost a supporting character and Sri Lanka is the protagonist, the events happening in Sri Lanka. We see how successive prime ministers adopted the Buddhist ideology of chauvinism against the Tamils and we see a series of non-violent and violent attacks against the Tamil population. What is a non-violent attack? For example, we are told that uh, a lot of the Tamil population were very educated and they held very good jobs in the government. Prabhakaran's father himself is a government officer and this threatened the Sinhalese and they worked hard, they brought about a bill to strip the Tamils of their education rights. And if you want an example of a violent attack, there is the World Tamil Research Conference taking place and they unleash a police raid against these peaceful people who are just speaking about Tamil because they fear that this will instill a sense of bravery or chauvinism in the Tamil people themselves. The first major political leader we see in this movie is Tandai Selva, a person who is a follower of Mahatma Gandhi. He wants to do things the non-violent way. But soon people realize, soon the Tamils realize that this is no longer going to work. Holding placards is no longer going to work. In fact, this line is repeated several times throughout the movie. In fact, the young Prabhakaran himself, who's sitting on his father's lap, turns to his father and says, why should not we hit back? Now, there is a lot of powerful material in Medhagu, but the film does not create the impact that it should. The filmmaking is very basic. The actors are stagey. The dialogues are very basic. I mean, if you are making a movie in which the Buddhist monks appear like James Bond movie villains, surely a few fiery lines of dialogue should not be out of place. But the film itself has no fire. It's as if a series of biographical points are being dutifully ticked off. That is, this happened and then that happened and then this happened and then that happened. We hear the news of a riot and then the very next scene, we see a radio in which the news of the very same riot is being repeated by a newsreader. But most importantly, we get Prabhakaran as just a generic rebel. We don't get the specifics that, that he was. You know, every man at, at like rebel has some specific qualities that make him different from, like let's take Motorcycle Diaries itself. You know, both Shea Guevara and Prabhakaran were similar figures in a sense, but there were a lot... But when you take the character alone, there will be different things from this character and that character. 
And that difference we do not get. For example, in Medhaga, there's a great line which says, Prabhakan is very soft-hearted and he cannot bear to see people suffering. I wanted more such lines that would define the man in our eyes. Because otherwise, we're just getting generic lines like how carrying placards is not enough. And these lines we've heard many, many times before. Now I understand that this is a very, very low-budget production. They must have killed themselves to get this movie made. So it almost feels wrong to criticize it on these fronts. But even if the filmmaking took a hit, even if you could not get the cast that you wanted, even if, not, if you could not get the equipment that you wanted, the script could have been stronger. But still, there are some powerful scenes. There is one very good scene in which Prabhakaran is talking to his father, who still wants him to abandon his principles and run away elsewhere and work. And this scene is intercut with a scene where a young Tamil woman in, in her home is being harassed by an inspector. And we keep cutting back between this scene and that scene and this scene and that scene. And we think that a certain thing is going to happen but then the end of this cutting back and forth between these two scenes, the end reveals how much of Prabhakaran's ideology has spread amidst the Tamils in the state. Sometime back, there was news that there was a movie called Serum Puli that was going to be made with Bobby Sima as Prabhakaran, but Medhago has made it first and with all its faults, it is a biopic that is an important one about a very crucial figure in not just Sri Lankan politics, but also Tamil Nadu politics. That's the end of this episode. If you like this review, do subscribe to Film Companion South and see you soon at the movies.